Assalamu alaikum. Hello, everyone. Uh, we welcome Wajahat Karim today. And uh, maybe we'll try uh, to wait two minutes before starting the presentation. Uh, so, this is Mohamed Said, the assistant professor at Iran University of Science and Technology. Uh, it's a great pleasure to welcome. So it's my pleasure to welcome Majad Karim, senior developer from Pakistan. He is uh, recognized by Google as developer expert in Android, and he likes contributing in open source and sharing his knowledge. He develops some useful Android li libraries, and he will talk uh, today about how to become a Google Dev expert. I was aiming that you talk about Android development and the upcoming challenges of mobile mobile development. But surprisingly, most of our students want to know how to become a Google Dev Expert. Uh, never mind. Uh, so thank you, Wajahat, for accepting the invitation and uh, also for the great work you are doing for the open source community. Uh, for our students, you can post your questions in YouTube comments, and uh, you can ask uh, also questions in Arabic or in French. Uh, I will try to translate them. Uh, you can maybe also ask uh, questions uh, related to Android uh, development. Uh, so, Kim, you have uh, 30 to 40 minutes for your talk. Thank you again, Karim. OK. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you, Mama Said, for uh, inviting me here. And uh, it's really great to see the fellow developers around the world. And uh, this is my first time interacting with anyone from Algeria in my whole career. So uh, it's very nice. And uh, I hope weather is uh, good there. Not sure. So it's very hot here in Karachi. So, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, although uh, I would have preferred uh, like more of uh, in-person uh, speaking, uh, but uh, this year is going very rough for you know, all the world. So mm -hmm. uh, it's set a little pause on the public speaking for now. So, uh, but. Uh, interacting online and uh, uh, doing the sessions uh, live uh, is also another game and uh, uh, it feels great to help other developers and uh, bring some impact on the community and uh, uh, bring some change. So it would be very honor for me uh, if uh, any one of you or any of you students uh, show interest in becoming a GDE and uh, uh, be a part of this awesome community. So I'll be uh, interact, I'll be showing you about uh, uh, how you can become GDE and uh, why uh, you should become GDE and uh, uh, what kind of opportunities this can bring to you. So uh, I'm speaking a little slowly uh, I hope uh, you can understand my English. Uh, if uh, you want me to uh, make it more slower or uh, make some changes to it, please let me know in your comments. Uh, I will try to adjust it. Uh, I believe uh, not in the language, but in the knowledge itself. So uh, we should learn in uh, whatever language we are comfortable with. So yeah. So. <clears throat> Uh, I'll be going through my slides, and uh, uh, I hope you can see it. Uh, okay. So uh, this is a little introduction of me. Uh, I am uh, Wajahat Karim. 
and uh, I am uh, Pakistan's uh, first Google developer expert in Android. Uh, we are about uh, 13 uh, GDEs in Pakistan, but uh, uh, for Android, uh, it's only me at the time. And uh, uh, I have been working on Android for more than eight years now, professionally and uh, uh, i have uh, majorly worked on service providing companies like uh, uh, freelancing and all that sort of stuff and uh, uh, then uh, one day uh, i decided to leave the freelancing and uh, uh, get into the open source contribution and uh, i started uh, from creating uh, one of my own library uh, and it went out to be one of the most used library. So at this time, uh, more than uh, 80,000 developers have uh, used that library in their application, uh, including big applications like uh, Dubai Mall's official uh, application as well. So it feels great that uh, so many uh, people uh, trust on you and rely on your code for their daily to daily uh, job. So uh, it's super awesome. And uh, uh, when I saw the living room uh, library from the professor's site, so I felt uh, very good. Like I tried it uh, in one of my sample application and uh, I actually liked it. Uh, and and uh, uh, being a student of uh, professor's site, uh, you should feel very fortunate that uh, you have such an amazing teacher uh, who goes uh, beyond ways uh, to teach you and help you out. So this is uh, very fantastic. And uh, beside that uh, open source, I write a lot. Uh, I have uh, my website and my medium. And uh, then uh, I also written uh, two worldwide published books with a uh, UK's uh, largest publisher. And uh, uh, you can see those uh, on the picture. So more than uh, 50,000 copies have been sold uh, collectively for both of these books. And uh, I'm thinking of writing another one. And uh, uh, besides, uh, besides job, my family, and open source and writing, uh, I somehow try to share my knowledge with uh, as much people as possible. So uh, this is why I am here and uh, I'm very active on Twitter. So please uh, follow me there or you can uh, learn more about me on my website uh, with uh, I You can find my articles there, my projects or uh, whatever uh, you think uh, about me. So yeah. So, uh, continuing with uh, uh, blogging and uh, writing, uh, I have more than uh, 100 articles on various topics. Uh, I write uh, sometimes personal articles as well, including like year in review, the, that sort of stuff. And uh, uh, mostly my articles are about tech and uh, Android specifically. So, if you are an Android developer, uh, you should uh, check it out. Uh, uh, I have a sort of uh, uh, style in my writing uh, which uh, my readers tend to like. So I write mostly detailed articles with uh, uh, from A to Z sort of uh, things. So uh, I believe that you will find a lot of uh, things in there. So. <clears throat> So this is uh, my GitHub profile, uh, and uh, uh, these are some of the, my libraries. Uh, you can find them on uh, uh, github.com slash vajatkarin3. So uh, you must be wondering that uh, uh, why I am sharing these. So uh, I will uh, continue with that point uh, later. So uh, the reason is uh, related with DTE. So, uh, you can find my all open source work here. And uh, although uh, since uh, I got a baby in my family, uh, I haven't got much time to do open source contribution, but uh, uh, I somehow can try to contribute it still. Yeah. So, 
Finally, uh, we are on my public speaking. Uh, these are the days uh, when there was no COVID-19 situation and we are allowed to make crowds and uh, enjoy the sense of community. So uh, I really miss that uh, energy in the audience. Uh, so this is uh, one of the things that uh, led me to become a GDE. So, <clears throat> so I, I got approached for GDE when my uh, public speaking got popular and uh, there were events uh, in Karachi happening uh, which were uh, directly or indirectly hosted by Google and uh, they had their contribution like uh, when Google I.O. happens then uh, every city tries to make another Google I.O. extended or uh, uh, we are approaching October so this is October it's a season of uh, um, they and now uh, in July, Android 11 meters. Yeah, so <clears throat> we are. In July, there are a couple of meetups about uh, uh, Android 11, so you can uh, check those out. They will be available on YouTube. Uh, uh, you can learn more about what's uh, upcoming in new Android variant. So, yeah. So, uh, I was approached by Google uh, after in 2018 when I gave a talk at uh, uh, DevFest about uh, what's new in Android. And, uh, uh, that was my first attempt. So at that time, uh, my profile was good, my everything was uh, perfect, but uh, I didn't have uh, very much experience. Like they require at least one year of uh, experience in all the contributions. So uh, they said that uh, you should uh, approach uh, again in 2019. So then uh, after a few months, uh, they tried to contact me again and uh, this time I had a medical situation at family and uh, I needed time. So uh, they paused it and uh, uh, until uh, November 2019, I was totally off the grid and uh, uh, I uh, was not active in any uh, sort of contribution like public speaking or anything. So then uh, once I got free with the medical situation and uh, family circumstances, uh, I uh, informed them that uh, we can proceed and then uh, I was eligible and I applied and uh, uh, there were a couple of interviews and then, uh, then uh, it was uh, February 2020 when I first became UDE. I wrote about this experience, uh, I wrote about this uh, talk in more details like uh, uh, I have written a couple of articles about this already. So. Uh, if you missed this talk, uh, you can read that and uh, uh, you can learn more about it. But this session will be more of an interactive, so I will, I highly recommend you to please uh, listen. So, now uh, we are coming with uh, uh, what and uh, why and uh, how and then we will be proceeding with QA. So uh, I hope there will be enough QAs uh, to keep the session engaged. <clears throat> GDE is all about three things, uh, Google developer and expert. Number one is Google, uh, it's all about Google related technology. So if you are uh, working on PHP or if you are working on Microsoft.net uh, or uh, Visual Basic.net or C-Sharp.net, then uh, you can't become a GDE for those technologies. Uh, GDE is only uh, applicable for uh, um, Google related technologies like Android, iOS, uh, sorry, not iOS, Android, um, there is Flutter, there is Google Cloud, there is Google Assistant, Google Play, or Angular, those kind of technology. Number two is uh, developer. You should have uh, serious technical knowledge. Uh, it's not about uh, you need to be an expert. No, you do not need to be an expert. 
uh, it's about that you have enough knowledge that uh, you can uh, share with others and uh, if uh, anyone asks you about uh, uh, any problem or issues, uh, you can actually help them, advise them and guide them. You need only that kind of knowledge which you can help with others. To fix their problems and uh, write about it and uh, make YouTube videos or something like that. So uh, Google understands that uh, uh, every field is very vast, uh, especially there are three big fields in GDE program. Uh, those are Android, Web, and uh, uh, Cloud. Then there are uh, subcategories of these, like uh, there is a Portland, there is Flutter, there is Google Assistant, there is Google Play. Uh, so if you are uh, trying to become a GDE and uh, Android, then uh, it's a very big competition. Like Android is very mature field and uh, uh, standing out from the crowd is very big challenge. Like uh, Google is finding a unique thing. So what you have got unique. So it's not about uh, whether you are a student or you are a professional. Uh, Google doesn't care about it. Uh, Google doesn't require it as well. Uh, uh, we have few GDEs uh, who became GDE while uh, graduate and while in the university. So uh, it's not a problem for them. So if you are a student, uh, you can still become a GDE and uh, you can you can still become a GDE and uh, uh, you can go with it. And finally, uh, we have expert. So it is, this is about uh, mostly about uh, influencer. So do you write a lot or do you make podcasts or do you make uh, YouTube videos or do you do public speaking? Uh, uh, somehow uh, you are an influencer and somehow uh, you love to be part of the community and uh, help others in their problems and uh, that is the only thing Google cares about besides the technology. So in short, uh, a GDE is all about someone who works in any Google related technology and uh, has a good knowledge in it and uh, is a contributor in the society. So that's the person who is uh, GDE and who can become GDE. So uh, then uh, we have uh, this is a simple definition from the Google Developer Expert Program, a uh, global network of highly experienced technology experts, influencers, and thought leaders. So I have highlighted some words here. Number one, support developers. So your first job is to support developers or companies and tech companies by either speaking at events or publishing content. So that's the only thing uh, you need for become a GD. So this is a simple directory. Uh, you can see all the GDEs around the world. So these are the Android GDEs from the world uh, at this time. So there are only 98 people uh, from the whole world uh, who are uh, GDEs and Android. Uh, the picture on this slide shows the GDEs in um, Asia. So there are only uh, 18 people in Asia uh, who are GDEs So in Android. So surprisingly, uh, I looked around on the internet and uh, in this directory and I found uh, there is only one person uh, who is a GDE from Algeria and that too in Android. So there are uh, not more than enough GDEs. So uh, you are the society uh, which Google is looking for. Like uh, you don't have much GDEs. You, you only have one GDE from the whole country. So uh, Google is actually uh, looking for uh, those kinds of countries where they either don't have an GDE or they either have very less GDE. So if you apply from the Algeria, then uh, it will improve your chances in becoming a GDE and uh, uh, I will help you out with the process and uh, uh, that person who is GDE that will also help you out. I have already talked to him and uh, uh, he will guide you and uh, uh, 
to become someone else about a duty. So <clears throat> let's get back to the uh, categories that uh, there are uh, Android, Angular, Firebase, Flutter, Web, and Machine Learning, then Dart, Assistant, Kotlin, Maps, Go, and IoT. So sorry for this line. Uh, I actually gave this similar talk in Pakistan a few, a few weeks ago, so the slide was from that perspective. So, <clears throat> so uh, in Pakistan, we have GDEs in the uh, left side of uh, category, but we don't have any GDE from the right side. So that's why I wrote it that this, these are the GDEs Google is looking for. So, you only have one GDE and uh, that to an Android. So uh, if uh, any of you is uh, uh, active in Firebase or Flutter or uh, other technologies, then uh, uh, you should proceed and uh, uh, there is no one uh, other GDE in your country. So uh, it will help you out uh, with the process easily. So that was what. Now uh, let's move to why. So simple, uh, Google needs someone uh, who actually brings some impact in the community. Like uh, I have always believed that uh, uh, knowledge should be free and knowledge should be for all. So I have always believed that uh, there should be no fees on knowledge or no financial knowledge. So this is what uh, being a GDE is all about. I love to share my knowledge with others regardless of uh, who is listening to me or uh, what I am sharing with. So uh, GDE is all about becoming uh, someone uh, who help others and that also love. So uh, if you have some sort of dream that uh, you want to become a GDE, then that's not a thing uh, Google is looking for. Uh, you will have to be an active part in the community and uh, uh, help others even after becoming a GD. So uh, I was doing writing for a lot of years. I was, uh, wrote, I wrote books and I wrote articles. I had more than 100 articles. Uh, so I was writing a lot. And uh, once I became a GD, uh, there was not really much difference. Like I was recognized as a GD. I had this uh, very big honor and uh, I had a very good title uh, inside of me, but uh, beside that, there was no difference. Like I'm still the same person who loved to write about it and who loved to share others. So if I stop sharing and uh, if I don't write, then uh, I will not be a GDE next year because uh, Google Developer Expert Program is actually uh, yearly renewed annually. So each year, uh, Google decides that uh, what uh, GDEs were active in throughout the year and those will be given one more year. So it's not a permanent uh, achievement, neither is not a permanent role. So uh, you can leave it anytime if you feel overwhelmed or if you don't want to continue. So uh, it's about an active role and uh, uh, yeah. So if you are uh, a community loving person, uh, I will uh, come to the community part later in this talk. So uh, if you are a community loving person, then yes, definitely you should be a Google developer expert. So uh, now we have understood that uh, what and why, uh, we uh, will continue with uh, how? So, as I said that uh, uh, you need a community impact. So, there is only one eligibility criteria that you love to contribute to community and giving back. That's it. There is nothing else. Like that is the only thing. So, how can you be part of the community? Uh, you can be part of the community by either speaking at uh, meetups or conferences or webinars or by writing content about blogs or doing podcasts or videos or books or by 
contributing to open source projects or creating your own plugins or libraries or maybe you can create issues and uh, what issues you face in Android Studio or Android OS and you can report uh, Google those also counts and uh, are you actually uh, do organized meetups or uh, very active on attack overflow and answering and helping other people or you are doing mentoring and uh, doing workshops and universities or uh, colleges are helping uh, underprivileged people so these are the things which actually uh, Google requires from you you don't need to do all of the stuff uh, you only need uh, one or two things but that's it because uh, Google knows that uh, there is not enough time for doing all of this stuff uh, at the same time. So yeah, so uh, I do speaking and I write uh, blogs and uh, I sometimes do uh, open source contributions. So yeah, that is the only things I do. So that is how uh, Google have approached me and uh, uh, that is why uh, they, are, they have made me GDE. So, now exams there is no exam this is not a certification uh, this is simple recognition of your contribution it's like uh, you have uh, contributed in the society and you have written a lot of articles and you have uh, helped other people and you have given a lot of attack overflow answers and uh, uh, then google realizes that oh here is this person who is very active on android and uh, sharing knowledge about Android with others. So uh, let's give him some honor. So they will give you a recognition of your contribution to our community. So that is how uh, it's all about becoming a duty. So one thing uh, I must share it here that uh, why uh, like this is uh, if Google then use every GDE every year then uh, it's a sort of headache. Like before GDE, I was free. I wanted to write article. Okay, I wrote an article. If I don't want to write an article, okay, I will not write. But now after GDE, I will have to write article. So why am I bothering with all of this? Okay. Number one, you don't have any pressure for uh, GDE. And uh, Google does not ask you anything. Google does not uh, expect you anything. Uh, they will give you the title and they will see next year that what are you doing and how have you come far. Besides that, uh, Google invests a lot in GDEs. Like uh, if this was a real public speaking and uh, if this was talk was organized in Orange University, then uh, I would actually be there and uh, all the visa and travel and hotel expenses will be covered by uh, Google itself. Google sponsors all of its GDE to events and uh, around the world if they are helping others uh, in their field. So that is one uh, benefit of uh, what you get from GDE. Then sometimes uh, Google uh, sends some gift like I got uh, Nest Mini uh, this past month from Google itself. And uh, uh, not only about uh, sponsorship and uh, uh, Gifts. Uh, it's also about uh, uh, early access. Like uh, the team at Android is working on a lot of stuff, so they are actually asking for the early feedback. The, uh, we have been uh, offered to explore uh, APIs and uh, uh, libraries which haven't been publicly announced by Google yet, and we don't know when those will be announced, but. Uh, we get early access and we get to try things uh, which uh, no one else gets to. And uh, eventually uh, Google tries to bring uh, uh, as many GDEs to Google I.O. Uh, US America as possible. So uh, I was expected to be there, but uh, uh, COVID situation, uh, because of the COVID situation, uh, event got canceled. So maybe next year. So these are some of the perks uh, which you get of the GDE. And uh, besides that, uh, I got a lot of recognition. Besides that, uh, I got good opportunity. Like uh, now, uh, whenever I apply to any job, uh, 
uh, I get uh, preference because uh, uh, Google Developer Expert brings authenticity in my work. Uh, for recruiters or for hiring uh, managers, it feels like I know Android and uh, I can work in Android. That's why uh, Google has uh, given me this title. So this brings a lot of authenticity in the work uh, and uh, in your portfolio and uh, it helps you get uh, more better opportunities, more better salaries and more better freelance projects and uh, uh, that's uh, really very great, that's really awesome. So these are a couple of reasons uh, you can uh, become GDE for. So what is their process? So there will be interviews, uh, there will be two interviews specifically and uh, one interview will be from an existing GDE so if you are uh, in Android field, then uh, there will be some other Android GTE uh, selected by Google itself. Uh, we don't know how they select it, but uh, you will get uh, uh, hit with some random uh, Android GTE and uh, that will uh, ask you questions and do interviews. Once you clear that interview, then uh, you will have another interview, which is uh, a little difficult uh, that will be from the Googler itself. So if you are an Android, then that interview will be from someone who is actually works in Android team. So the people uh, who you look on YouTube are uh, uh, in Android videos are at Android uh, events and Google events. Uh, those are the people uh, who will be uh, doing your final interview. So both interviews could be technical and non-technical. Usually, uh, ideally, uh, GDE's interview is all about community. So uh, any GDE will ask you that uh, how you contribute to community, how you write articles, how you do videos, how do how you public speaking, or why you do all this stuff, and that's uh, kind of question. And he can ask you for the technical questions as well. The Googler interview is uh, mostly technical and uh, it's about uh, whether uh, you actually know the technology or not. So if you are uh, becoming a GDE in Android, then uh, they will be asking about uh, uh, how much stuff you know about Android and what have you worked on. And uh, maybe they will ask some technical questions to level or got your um, intellectuality and knowledge about Android. So uh, that's the process. So if you want to apply, uh, get involved, start by doing. Uh, there is no uh, button apply now uh, on their website. Uh, you cannot apply to be a, become a GTE. Uh, you will have to get nominated. So uh, there is no application button. Uh, Google will find you itself. Uh, you don't have to do anything. So if you are doing a lot of work in community and if you are doing a lot of uh, community contribution in any field of Google, then someone definitely will notice you about and uh, will uh, see that what you are doing and uh, that someone will actually nominate you that uh, uh, he should become a GDE. And that's how your process will start. There is no uh, apply now button. So, so if you uh, want to be actually, uh, if you want to actually apply, then uh, you can either directly approach to me uh, with my email or my website, or you can actually uh, contact uh, Muhammad Gundos. Uh, he is actually a professor in University of Saida and he is the only Google developer expert from uh, Algeria, your own country. As I mentioned that I have already talked to him and uh, I have already informed about this talk. So uh, if you approach him uh, with the interest that you want to become GDE, uh, he will definitely help you and uh, he will also nominate you. He can nominate you. Uh, nomination comes from two uh, people, either any GDE can nominate you or any uh, Googler can nominate you. 
I am also in contact with uh, uh, Algeria's regional lead from Google, and uh, uh, he hasn't. Uh, he is uh, out of the office for now. So once he gets back uh, from the vacation, uh, he will be. Uh, he can help you to become GDE as well. So getting nominated is the half battle. Uh, there is uh, nothing else uh, about. It. Besides, uh, the process is very simple and very easy, not that hard. Uh, but getting nomination is very difficult. Uh, that is more than half better. So uh, you will have to do uh, actual work. You will have to do a lot of talks. You will have to do a lot of contributions. And uh, uh, you will have to do open source or writing or uh, these kinds of. And uh, usually, ideally, Google expects that uh, you do all these community contribution at least a year. So if you are, uh, if, if you want to become DDE at the longer term, then you should uh, get it started now and uh, uh, start. Uh, you can approach to me directly via my email or uh, I will share my uh, calendar link if you want to privately discuss with me anything. Uh, and uh, uh, you can uh, actually, uh, uh, get my guidance about how this whole process will continue and what you should do and how you should do it. I can guide you in whatever problems you are facing. Uh, I will share the link with uh, uh, Sir Said and uh, uh, Said, uh, can you share this with others? So yes, um, you will have to get nominated and uh, uh, I can help you in getting nominated or uh, Muhammad can get you, uh, help you nominate it. So uh, that's the only thing. Uh, and this is my link, uh, calendly.com slash uh, You can book any 30 minutes slot with me and uh, I'll be there and uh, uh, whatever phase you are in, whether you need career advice or whether you need uh, Android help or uh, whether you need uh, help with your projects or uh, any kind of stuff like you can uh, directly approach them. Uh, I get a lot of uh, uh, sessions on this and uh, I love to help so I will definitely be there inshallah and I will help you. And so uh, these are some more details about this. And uh, I have already written an article about this whole preparation. Uh, you can learn more about it. And there are other articles as well uh, from other GDE. So you can uh, uh, you know, read all those as well. So uh, for example, the article, uh, this one, and uh, this is very good because uh, Jessalyn Jean was uh, GDE for four years and then she actually joined Google. So now she is a Googler and she actually works in Google. So yeah. So uh, this was all slide again. So I would love to extend my special thanks to uh, Muhammad Said and uh, Oran University and uh, Algeria country. Uh, inshallah, I will visit it sometime. And uh, uh, for you all, you students uh, who are actually listening to me and who are actually uh, here with my, uh, either my audience, it feels very uh, honored and uh, uh, I'm very thankful to Almighty Allah for this uh, respect and honor. So thank you for listening. Uh, you can follow me on YouTube. Uh, I am starting my videos. I have uh, created some. And I also upload my all uh, recorded talks on uh, YouTube as well, including this one. Uh, I will upload it as well. So, uh, yeah. So, you can watch my talks. And uh, I also run a newsletter uh, in which I share different kinds of things. So, you can subscribe to it. Uh, it's vajatkarim.substack.com. So thank you, thank you. Thank you, Karim. Uh, shukriya. Uh, so, uh, 
don't have any question. Yes, we have one question. Uh, so we are honored uh, by your talk, Karim. Thank you for uh, accepting this invitation. Uh, uh, thank you also for this uh, clear presentation. Uh, I have to point out that uh, these achievements require a lot of hard work. Uh, so for our students, it's not uh, uh, so simple to become uh, Google developer experts. Uh, so you have to work uh, hard work to uh, go to these achievements. So for the questions, uh, thanks. Uh, that's uh, my brother. He's in uh, Oslo, in Norway, as he's doing some research. Thanks for your amazing talk. As BD, is there any possibility to work on research programs and publish papers in scientific conference journals? Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Muhammad Bashir. Uh, actually, uh, I'm not uh, totally sure about this, but uh, uh, I will ask Google us about this uh, scientific conferences and journals, and uh, uh, I will let uh, Mama Said know about this question. And uh, uh, so far, uh, whatever I think that uh, it should be acceptable because uh, it's also a contribution and uh, in the field and in the uh, papers is also sort of a tough job and. Uh, it's also for others to help. So yes, uh, in simple words, uh, Google needs things which can help others. So uh, I will confirm it from Googlers and uh, will definitely know. But I think uh, it should be accepted. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Karim. Uh, so we can have also some questions about Android development. Don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Whatever questions you feel. From Pakistan, okay. from weather, anything. Um, this is a question from Hossein. Can the GitHub and Stack, uh, Stack Overflow's account circulation influence the possibility to be chosen as DD? Yes, uh, these are the first things uh, which actually uh, Googlers look for uh, GitHub and Stack Overflow. In fact, uh, when you uh, get nominated, uh, GitHub will ask. Google will ask you about the email uh, which you actually use for GitHub and Attack Overflow, and uh, they have their system of uh, automatic uh, syncing. Like uh, they will have your whole uh, information, and like uh, uh, how much projects uh, you have created on GitHub, and how much stars you have got, and how much contributions you have done, and Attack Overflow, uh, how much reputation you got, and so. These are the primary things in becoming a GD. So if you have either both or any one of these profiles with a good, uh, good reputation, then yes, uh, you are already on the way to become a GD. Okay, thank you, Karim. Uh, next question from Mohammed Osif. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, you want to know your op opinion about the future of native Android development with the upcoming uh, frameworks such as Flutter and the possible coming future? Wa alaikum so, salam. <laughs> so actually, uh, I actually expected this because this is a question which I get asked in every conference where I go. So. Uh, so I would love to clear one thing here that uh, Flutter or uh, any other kind of uh, cross-platform framework like uh, React Native or Xamarin or all those actually depend on the native. So uh, if you are a little curious about uh, uh, whether Flutter will replace the native Android development, so answer is no, uh, it will not uh, replace Android development or iOS development. Uh, it actually runs on Android development. So if Android creates anything, then uh, Flutter will have to adopt that. So Flutter is actually child and dependency on Android itself. So uh, yes, uh, you don't need to worry about this. And uh, besides the future, uh, there are some 
application, some projects uh, which are very uh, easy to build in cross-platform framework and very hard to build in native. And there are some projects which are very hard to build in uh, cross-platform and easy to build in native. So it's all matter of requirement. So if you uh, you uh, should not be uh, loyal to any one technology. Like uh, okay, no, I will do everything in Android. No, it's not like that. You should see that uh, which technology will work better with that kind of requirements and that kind of projects, and you should do that. If you think that Flutter is best for your project and uh, Flutter can help you uh, do less work and uh, uh, it's tough, then you should definitely go about this. Uh, yes, uh, there are a lot of good uh, jobs and opportunities about Flutter. So Flutter's uh, near, near future is very good. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, next question also from Mohamed Chief is uh, Is it better to use copy sensitive or data bank? Um, okay. Uh, article in your website about evolution of uh, finding views? So I actually uh, wrote an article about this, yes. uh, that uh, yes, whether uh, Kotlin synthetics uh, are better yeah. or data binding is better. Uh, let me just share you, uh, then I will answer it. Yeah. So, uh, Actually, Kotlin synthetics uh, were very uh, super cool and awesome when they were came. Uh, but uh, later, uh, Google uh, recognized that uh, uh, this is uh, this brings a lot of problems because Kotlin synthetics are not null safe. Uh, like uh, you cannot verify that if you actually get any view is uh, null or not. So. I have written uh, more details on this uh, in my article and uh, about data binding, about view binding and uh, all the options uh, which are available for this. So I would recommend that uh, you should use data binding and uh, if you are not, uh, uh, if you are overwhelmed by data binding or if you find it difficult then uh, you should give it a try on view binding. Uh, it's a new one and it's very simple and it uh, helps you a lot. So currently, a uh, recommended way of uh, finding views uh, is view binding. So, yeah. OK, thank you. Uh, question from Constantine. What are the technologies and projects that Google are most interested in while looking for GDs? So uh, mostly, uh, every technology Google works on is uh, eligible for uh, GDE. And uh, uh, the thing is that uh, there are some popular technologies like Cloud, Android, or uh, Flutter, or that uh, kind of technology, which uh, uh, there are already a lot of GDEs in the field and already doing a lot of work. So Google actually uh, prefers technologies who have less GDEs and uh, less content. For example, uh, machine learning uh, is a good field. So if you look for machine learning, uh, there are very uh, few articles as compared to Android or Flutter, or uh, very few videos as compared to Android or Flutter. So uh, Google will actually prefer the GDE and uh, machine learning who can contribute more and who can help others more as compared to Google or Flutter because they are very popular technologies and there are already a lot of people uh, who are actually uh, creating content and uh, sharing with others. So, but still, there is no any uh, specification. If you want to become a GDE in Android and you have a good profile in Android, then Google will definitely make you one. Thank you. Another question from Salim. Is there any specific amount of uh, publishers, articles, or events you need to do every year to be accepted as GDE? Um, no, uh, it's not like that. Uh, Google does not uh, require a uh, lot of numbers, but uh, they do require numbers. Like when you apply on uh, becoming a GDE, 
you will have to actually fill an Excel sheet uh, in which you will be sharing that uh, uh, which articles you wrote and how many people wrote it, how many people read it, or which videos you made, and how many uh, people actually uh, viewed it. So uh, there are numbers involved, but uh, there is nothing like uh, uh, you should do minimum this or minimum that. Uh, numbers are only for the purpose that uh, Google knows that uh, uh, your content is uh, actually uh, being read, not some uh, you don't have any uh, empty or ghost blog where where there is no traffic. So uh, Google actually uh, prefers the articles or videos uh, which do actually get you. So yeah. And uh, uh, about the yearly thing, uh, then uh, uh, mostly it's all about uh, content creation or uh, contribution open source or Stack Overflow. Whatever you want to do it, uh, you can do it easily. Uh, but there is only one requirement which uh, Google has made uh, last year that uh, uh, GTE should do at least public speaking. So uh, you should do at least uh, one talk a year in uh, any Google related event like Google IO Extended or Google Dev or Dev Fair. If there is not enough meetups in Algeria, uh, that you can actually host one and you can do it as well. And that will also uh, get you a plus point in becoming a GD. Okay, thank you. Maybe the last question. Uh, do you think that Kotlin can be used only for app development or it can extend and be so, extended to other things? Yes. There is a actually a field called as Kotlin multi platform. So if you search about it, uh, you will find it. Kotlin is already being used in uh, every platform now. Uh, you can make uh, Android app, iOS app, you can make uh, uh, front-end website and actually JavaScript HTML using Kotlin and you can actually make a uh, back-end API uh, using Kotlin. So Kotlin is now trying to uh, get a multi-platform like uh, uh, Flutter. So yes, uh, you can use Kotlin and other tools. There is, uh, uh, some context. Uh, it's early. Uh, it's early days of Kotlin multi-platform, but uh, you can find a lot of articles and videos on this. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, maybe last question from Osif. How do you handle bitmaps in Android? As it takes too much memory, maybe you can use uh, some libraries if you can. You can Okay, I understand uh, the frustrations with uh, bitmaps. Uh, I can't answer this in much detail because it's a very uh, situation dependent. Question. So, if you are working on any uh, canvas related application like some painting application or coloring application, then uh, you got a lot of bitmaps in there and you will have to process it. So. Uh, easy way would be to optimize it or uh, scale it and uh, picture related filter applications or uh, you can do it uh, if there is a very heavy load on bitmaps like uh, there was this application about Prisma which allowed uh, people to make uh, uh, art pictures of their own uh, selfies and uh, pictures so this kind of computation cannot be processed on a mobile device so you will have to take it to server and process it there. So yeah, uh, Android uh, can process bitmap, but uh, not too big because uh, it has a uh, memory. And uh, you get a lot of uh, variations of Android devices, so you can't uh, uh, trust that whether your application will work on every kind of device or not. Okay. Uh, question from Fahaz Naji. Is Google interested in the news? Um, yes. Uh, sorry. Uh, when you apply uh, to become a GDE, uh, Google will ask you everything. So you can submit your scores and you can submit anything uh, which can help you in GDE. Whether it's uh, one month old or it's, uh, three years old or four years old, or it was very old, so it's not a problem. Google will accept it. Okay. So we have three minutes. So 
if you have any advice for our students or our future uh, Android developers? Okay, okay uh, this is a good question. Yeah, uh, I have some advice. So, uh, number one, uh, in general, uh, for students, uh, for developers, uh, please uh, focus on your personal branding. Uh, personal branding is very important, uh, especially in 2020 or 2021, that kind of years, because now it's not a soft skill anymore, it's a required skill. So by personal branding, I mean that uh, you should have a website, uh, your first name, your last name, .com, and uh, uh, at least you should have a website. You can create now free websites on GitHub pages and the Firebase hosting easily. So you don't need any special requirement for that. You can uh, you can simply uh, write on about what you do and why you do and uh, share some projects. And then uh, blogging is very important. Uh, the more you blog, the more you learn. So that's how I keep up. Uh, and about Android, uh, there is only one. Android is uh, growing very rapidly, very fast. So. Uh, you should uh, keep an eye on uh, uh, the GDEs, uh, other GDEs and Googlers, uh, especially uh, you can follow up on Twitter. Uh, Twitter is very active in developers community, so you will learn a lot of stuff and uh, read as much as you can. And uh, uh, Or if you prefer video, then watch video as much as you can and learn more and more about Android itself. And, uh, 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 to actually uh, keep up with it, uh, create, start an open source project, and do it. whether it's an application you wanted to build or it's about uh, contributing to other open source projects like uh, I do uh, contribute on Mozilla and I'm now thinking on contributing with DuckDuckGo. So uh, there are plenty of uh, uh, open source projects where you can contribute. Once I actually contributed in a library by Facebook, uh, I, I was using it in my application and uh, I wanted some uh, customization on it and uh, Facebook didn't have that thing. So I actually uh, made a pull request and uh, I made that change myself uh, for my own project. I added it. Later they merged it. It was very surprising that uh, they accepted it and they actually merged it in their official code. And uh, uh, about uh, two weeks later, they actually uh, invited me for an interview. And uh, after the interview, uh, uh, I got a job offer in uh, Facebook Messenger team as a uh, mobile solution engineer in London. So, uh, of course, I don't want to leave country and I want to live with my family. So, I rejected it and uh, declined it. So, yeah. Open source and uh, online branding can help you a lot of opportunities and uh, you can never imagine. So, yes. And keeping up with Android is hard, I know, but uh, uh, you should uh, keep learning. You never stop learning. If you stop learning, uh, you will be deprecated in a year. So, yeah. So, thank you again, Kelly. So, so uh, for your talk, yeah, uh, it was. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, invitation. No problem, no problem. Uh, it was very uh, fantastic, and uh, uh, it was very awesome uh, having with you uh, and sharing uh, my knowledge with the uh, Algerian community. And, uh, uh, I will definitely try to visit uh, Algeria once. So it You're was welcome. very good. Yeah, uh, thank you. So, uh, thank you, Said, for inviting okay. me here. It was really awesome. And thank you okay. for all the students uh, who are actually here. I really appreciate your time and uh, uh, you are being here to listen to me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. See you soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum. See you soon. Okay.